Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I know what you mean. I mean, I'm not a musician, but that beautiful blend of voices takes your breath away, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah really lovely. When you, when you tour, do you tour with an orchestra? Sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in the UK, we've been touring over the summer uh, with a singer called Catherine Jenkins, uh, who's a big uh, Welsh opera singer in the UK, with the National Symphony Orchestra that we'll be doing again for the whole of December in venues like the Albert Hall and the Manchester Arena and the Cardiff Arena. Uh, and that's with a big 60-piece orchestra and sometimes a choir. And, and that for us is, is great fun. I mean, the live aspect is, is really exciting when you're actually in front of an audience mm -hmm. and engaging with an audience and seeing how it's going down. And, um, and like the second album is a, is a kind of a, 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 a culmination of, of what we've learnt over the last year about what works well in public and what doesn't work so well. Well, some of your jobs are very public and, and others are more like birthday presents, aren't they? Oh, Who yes. wants to tell me Shirley that beautiful Bassett. story? Yeah. Yeah. You were the present. Isn't we she were, lucky? We were Shirley's present. It's interesting, actually. She saw us. We, we do quite a lot of performance on UK television, all sorts of different shows. And uh, Shirley managed to catch us on, on a show and said to a fan, I want those boys. I want them at my birthday party. I the can just hear her. At 70, she was talking to that. And, uh, and the friend said, oh, I don't know, they, they, they tour a lot, they're quite busy. So consequently, uh, we got a telephone call saying, look, I'm Shirley's best friend, would you come and sing for her birthday? So we turned up, we were on the stage, and we sang a big operatic version of Happy Birthday for her. And with that, she jumped onto the stage. I mean, a seven-year-old woman that ran and jumped on the stage and started kissing all of us on the lips. Oh, my heart. Um, she's quite a kisser. A kisser. She's quite a kisser. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was quite a it was a huge birthday cake. And oh, so she, she cut pieces of the birthday cake off. And, you know, the world's press were there clicking away. And she started feeding each of yeah, us a little piece of birthday cake. But unfortunately, what she didn't realise was that the last tear of the birthday cake had polystyrene in it. And so we didn't want to be rude, and we, we were chomping away, going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Not really working for it, the you I love you also, you also performed for the Queen's 80th birthday? Yeah, that, that was me. I, I was off to sing uh, at Windsor Castle, actually, for the Queen's 80th, uh, in front of uh, the Queen and all the royal family, in fact. And that was quite a nerve-wracking experience, okay. standing up there, and yeah. like, all the distant cousins, all the sons, the grandchildren, everybody was there. But... In fact, as a group, we've sung to the Queen and the Royal Family a year ago at the Albert Hall, which, in fact, we're going to do that. We, we fly back on Thursday to the UK. Two days later, we're in the Albert Hall singing to the Queen and all the Royal Family. What's that like? With jet lag. Like? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, so, like, what's the, there must be security uh, issues and all sorts of things. We've got to keep the, the Queen, queen away. away from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, after Shirley Bassey, you never know what she can do. She's a fit 80-year-old. <laughs> but when, when you're performing like that, I mean, I'm wondering... What's more exciting, performing to the royal family, performing in an, in an enormous theatre, performing Weirdly. with, yeah, exactly, or performing with someone like Shirley Bassey? People come specifically to see you, I think, is, is the best thing. Over, I mean, over the summer we've been concerts with, with Catherine throughout the summer, and there's about 20 or so concerts, and they range from 6,000 people up to anything up to 15,000 people. And that size of audience we love, because when you can get them up on their feet, we'll do something like up where we belong, and we'll have them waving in time. And we, we're seen as classical musicians, but we do a lot of pop music. And so to inject pop music into classical concerts gives people a fantastic show. And is, is it hard to get that uh, initially across? Or do, do you find that uh, the big audiences are sort of hesitant because they think classical, well, I'm not going to that? Think, or is, is the crossover really easy? Well, I think a lot of the times, I mean, especially when we're singing with Catherine, she's very classical, and so when we come on stage, it's almost kind of light relief, um, because, you know, there's only so much classical music people want to listen to before yeah. they get bored. Yeah. Uh, it's just, that's just a natural thing. I think one of the things about the second album is that we're basically saying, you know, we live in this iPod generation where people have very eclectic tastes in music, you know, over the last ten years, you know, film music and, and, and music of adverts has, has brought sort of classical style music to people's yeah, attention. That's so true, isn't and it? And I, I think what we're saying is some very core classical music can potentially alienate people. You know, it's, it's not accessible enough. And so by adding pop elements, it makes it you know, more accessible. And that's what we've done. It's about okay, so people what they want as well. Well, I was about to say, I mean, with that in mind, are there any no-go songs? I mean, is, is there, there can he go too far? Too sacred, aren't they? Like you know, what? Well, I, yes, we've always about. been scared of the Beatles. Yeah. Um, you know, record companies themselves are terribly scared of doing things like that. Yeah. We, we touched on the Beach Boys on our first album, and we did it with a great deal of respect and a great deal of honour, and it worked. Um, but there are some things that you just, yeah, you, you would need to be careful of. Wish list? We were going to do something, uh, a, a couple of Michael Bublé songs, yeah. um, and I think that we we steered clear of them because we, he's 
who's got such an incredible voice, you think, well, can I, you know, you're not necessarily going, can I improve on it? Because a lot of the times we're going, can we make it sound different yes. and, you know, by adding an orchestra or, you know, with, with our kind of uh, harmony. Yeah. But I think that the Michael Buble songs were ones that we'd stay clear of. We were in a restaurant last night and they were playing a Michael Jackson CD. Yeah. And Stephen Turner said it'd be great if we could find a Michael Jackson song. So, <laughs> 25 years after we love to experiment in, in the studio. Yeah. We love to go in there and just play around with things. I mean, the thing is, we, we live in a very, with our kind of music, it's a fusion of different styles, all sorts of things mixed together, which makes it great fun for us. So we can have a go at these songs. They might sound terrible, they'll never end up on an album, but we'll have a go. But who knows, yeah. yeah. And, and look, and before we go, we should say, welcome, welcome back home. Oh, thanks. <laughs> half Aussie, you? Half Aussie. I'm really pleased to be here. Got, it was great at customs at the airport going straight through. And, 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 and having no idea where you were. Yeah. <laughs> it only took one minute to get to customs, so thank you very much to the customs officer. Oh, they, they do a marvellous job. Yeah, well, it's been excellent yeah. to meet you. Thank you so thanks, much for your time this morning. We wish you a great tour of all the best. Thank you so much.